One of the most common questions I get as an economics professor and on this channel is, are there jobs for economics majors? Now, I think what they mean when they ask that is, can I expect to get paid if I study economics? Well, what if I told you that studying economics could increase your lifetime earnings by over half a million dollars? There is some new exciting research that looks exactly at the causal effect of majoring in economics on your lifetime earnings. I'm gonna try and explain it using these chocolates. Let's go ahead and review what we already know about how much economics majors makes versus non-economics majors. About a year ago, I did that video on the major lies about majoring in economics. And in that video, I reviewed salaries for economics majors, unemployment rates for economics majors. What we learned there is that one year after graduating college, back in around 2018, the typical economics major was making $65,000. The average for all other majors was $50,500. So that's a $14,500 difference just in that first year after school. About that same time, if you looked at the salaries for 40 year olds in the labor market, what you would see is that economics majors at age 40 were making $90,000 on average, whereas the typical 40 year old who had majored in something else was making $66,000. So that's a $24,000 increase by the time you're 40, right? So this is good prima facie evidence that majoring in economics could lead to a higher salary. But as an economist, you should know that we don't look at this evidence and take it as the causal effect. Why not? The problem is that people choose their majors and their choice might reflect something about them. That's why I have these chocolates right here. I actually have two kind. I've got this uh, this green kind right here and I have this pink one. Let's say these colors reflect the characteristics about you or about these people that are also important for the labor market. So let's say the green color indicates that you're a quantitative person. You have good math and computer science skills, whatever the case is. And then this pink one indicates that you have good social skills. And it might be the case that people with really good quantitative skills tend to major in economics and people with really good social skills tend to major in a major like psychology. And this kind of like makes sense to us because when you think of like a psychologist, you want somebody who's good at talking with people. And when you think of an economist, you think of somebody who's not very good at talking with people. So when you're looking at differences in average salaries, what you're seeing is somebody who majors in economics might really just be a quantitative person and somebody who majors in psychology might be a social skills person. And the differences in their salary don't reflect the effect of the major. It just reflects something about their person personality and their skills that led them to also choose those majors. So it's not fair to compare these salaries and say the difference is the effect of majoring in economics. That effect could come from lots of different factors. This is probably a good point to just make sure we're all on the same page when I say, what is the causal effect of majoring in economics? When we're talking about causal effects, we're basically talking about alternate universes. We have a universe where Craig majored in economics and today creates market power. But but there is another world where Craig majored in psychology and he created brain power. In these ideal alternate universes, we're looking at a history of Craig all the way up until he goes to college and he decides in one world to major in economics and the other world to major in psychology. It's a lot like that community episode, Intro to Chaos Theory, where they roll the die and we get different worlds as a result of where the die lands. In one world, we get the community series as we saw and in another world, we get the darkest timeline. The difference between these worlds reflects the causal effect of Jeff going down and getting the pizza. Ideally, we want the same thing to happen, but for what major we choose. Now, obviously we don't have a sitcom where we get to see what Craig and Econ and Craig and Psych look like in the long run and compare their different outcomes, but we wanna try and get close to that. So how can we get close? We're gonna have to go to a homemade chocolate bar.
Now I started off talking about how an economics major might just be a quantitative guy and a psychology major might just be a social guy. The truth is people don't just have one of these skills, they have a mixture of the two. There are psychology majors who do a lot of quantitative work. They have very good quantitative skills and there are a lot of economics majors who are very social people. Now you can imagine that we could line people up and say, how quantitative are you versus how social are you? So I decided to turn these skill chocolates into a chocolate bar. I was really excited to do this because I wanted this really oddly satisfying video of chocolate melting over a boiler, but I did it the wrong way and it ended up looking like So I had to find a new way to mix these together. And they're lined up in a way, hopefully, where people with stronger quantitative skills are on this side, and the further you go over, the stronger you get in social skills, but you start losing quantitative skills. Let's say that the people who are, tend to be stronger in quantitative skills are also the ones who tend to major in economics, while the people who tend to have stronger social skills tend to major in psychology. When we compare salaries for economics majors versus psychology majors, what we tend to be doing is breaking off these end pieces and saying, what are these two people like? And when we look inside them, we see that they're very different in their characteristics. What we want is somebody here in the middle, somebody who has decent quantitative skills, as well as decent social skills, who who just decided to go to economics or who just barely decided to go to psychology. What we want to be able to do is just cut down the middle of this bar and find two pieces that are really similar and are only different in that they chose different majors. This is called a regression discontinuity design. That's where this new research comes in. And what's really exciting is that some economists found a group of people who are right there on that line between economics and another major like psychology. This research takes place at UC Santa Cruz. The economics department at UC Santa Cruz restricted who was allowed to major in economics. To get in the economics major, you had to have a GPA of 2.8 in your first two economics classes. Most of the people who fall just below that 2.8 GPA lose entirely their chance. There's some discretion that lets people get through, but you can see a huge jump in whether you major in economics based on this GPA threshold. If you got just above that 2.8, you are 36 percentage points more likely to major in economics than if you fall just below it. Now this is really cool because the difference between a 2.85 and a 2.75 GPA is hardly anything at all. That is the difference of waking up on the final exam day with a good night's rest or if you're just a little bit off and you miss one question on the exam, right? These type of people should be nearly identical. In fact, one way we could look at this is to look at SAT scores along with GPA. And you can see that SAT scores are pretty continuous. Obviously people with higher GPAs get higher SAT scores, but right around that 2.8 line, those people are all getting the same SAT scores. Yet their majors end up really different because the economics department created an arbitrary GPA cutoff. So the next thing to look at is when these students graduate, what do their salaries look like across this GPA threshold? If we go back to this chocolate bar, we know that economics majors have much higher salaries than the psychology majors, but we wanna know about these people right in the middle. Those people who went through the cutoff are they looking the same once they graduate or do we see them get pushed up to higher salaries while the ones on the other side of the cutoff get pushed down to the lower salaries? Well, this is what salaries look like when you graduate based on your GPA in your first two economics class. There's nothing else on this x-axis except for whether you got above a B minus average in your first two economics classes. And the difference is astounding. There's a huge gap between the people who are just under the 2.8 GPA and the people who are just over it. Well, using these two facts, saying how much did this affect whether you major in economics and how much did this affect your salary, we can calculate that the causal effect of majoring in economics is about $23,000. That's in your annual salary. Over your lifetime, discounted to the present value is $536,000. Over half a million dollars difference in lifetime earnings. So 
why does economics have such a big effect? Well, it looks like what happens is it changes the type of jobs that people end up getting. They're more likely to work in finance and in insurance and in real estate, maybe accounting. They work in different industries, be probably because these industries come to these economics majors or to business type majors and recruit there versus the psychology majors that might not get recruited as much into these fields. But the big takeaway is yes, there are jobs for economics majors and yes, they pay incredibly well. And it's not just about who you are. It actually changes your outcomes. You have a different world thanks to your economics major. Speaking of the world, here at Market Power, we are interested in the power of markets and economics to shape our world. If you're interested in fields of economics, go ahead and check out there. Or if you're interested in other videos that I've done, please check them out there and please subscribe so you can join this community interested in and excited about economics.